Our other top story tonight is about Israel and U.S. foreign policy. By some estimates, the U.S. gives Israel as much as $5 billion a year when you combine both military and economic assistance. If you divide that by the 8 million or so Israeli citizens, that means that the American taxpayers are handing each Israeli citizen a check for about $625 a year. Now, because some of that money is used by the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces, and Israel's ongoing battle with the Palestinians, some of whom are also Israeli citizens, and it may not be fair to suggest that all citizens are benefiting from the U.S. contributions. Regardless, we preface our coverage today with this issue because rarely do Americans get to assess just how much of their tax contributions go to countries like Saudi Arabia and Israel and Egypt. And of course, the U.S. media rarely breaks down just how we as a country are really spending our money. 60% of the money that we give or that our government takes from us goes toward defense. And most of that is often divvied up nowadays between defense contractors. Tonight, we talked to two American patriots who are concerned about the American foreign policy and where it's leading us. You're going to hear from both Scott Ritter and Chris Hedges, who are generally ignored by the corporate media, but not by us. We think you should hear what they have to say. This is the news with Brick Sanchez, where we do believe it's time to do news again. One person who believes that our relationship with Israel is actually counterproductive to our foreign policy is a former U.N. weapons inspector, patriot, Marine, and U.S. foreign policy critic, Scott Ritter. He hit a nerve recently, and he got a huge reaction for his comments on YouTube. We allow ourselves to be demonized and controlled uh, through fear and ignorance. We allow other nations to intervene and impose their uh, political ambitions, their regional ambitions uh, on the American people disguised as American policy. First and foremost is the state of Israel and what, what's happening in, uh, in the Middle East today. A lot of it is driven out of Tel Aviv by Israeli politicians who, uh, who use a very powerful lobby here in the United States to uh, to get the policies they want uh, from the United States. Uh, I don't think the American people understand, you know, what's happening behind the, uh, b b behind the partition. You know, uh, the <laughs> Wizard of Oz is, is far different than what we think it is. It's, uh, it's, the levers are being pushed by powers that aren't necessarily reflective of what the American people thought when they, when they voted for people and who they thought they were putting in office. You know, I think a really good example of what you just described is Hezbollah. Hezbollah is obviously no friend to Israel, but they're not necessarily, as far as I can tell, an enemy of the United States. And yet, many of the decisions that we're making in terms of foreign policy is almost as if Hezbollah attacked us last week or something. It seems odd to me. Well, first of all, let's, you know, it would be easier if we just stopped using the term Hezbollah, even though that's an accurate term, it, it reflects the party of God that exists in, in Lebanon. But we spoke of southern Lebanese Shia, because that's what we're talking about. We're talking about people who live in southern Lebanon who were invaded and occupied by the state of Israel, people who decided to resist the Israeli occupation, and people who united under common, common cause to expel the Israelis from southern Lebanon. Um, this is Hezbollah, but it's also you know, southern Shia. It's a legitimate organization whose roots are derived from legitimate grievances against a nation who invaded and occupied its, its territory. You know, uh, on the surface, this is sort of the kind of organization that the United States should aspire to be allied with, to support. Uh, people who say, no, we, we will determine how we live on the land that we occupy and we've occupied for generations, not let an outside power uh, dictate. But we've allowed the Israelis to twist the Hezbollah narrative to the point that they're now described as a terrorist organization that is vehemently anti-American when that is not the case. Hezbollah just wants to live in peace with its neighbors. Um, I don't know what would happen if Israel withdrew from the Sheba farms, which Hezbollah claims is the last piece of occupied uh, Lebanese territory. But 
what I do know that is so long as Israel continues to occupy territory that Lebanon claims is, it belongs to it, Hezbollah will resist. Hezbollah has a vested interest in seeing the government in Damascus of Bashar al-Assad remain in power and not be overthrown by radical Sunni fundamentalists. Um, so Hezbollah provides support to this government. This is a legitimate act of one neighbor helping another neighbor. Remember, Hezbollah is acting at the invitation of the Israeli of the Syrian government. Uh, they're opposing uh, outside uh, proxies that are supported by the United States, who is in Syria without the invitation of the Syrian government. So. You know, the American people, if they would just dig deep, ask questions, be intellectually curious about the reality of what's going on, uh, might not necessarily fall victim to the gross oversimplification that takes place when we, for instance, call Hezbollah a terrorist organization whose goals and objectives are you know, against the national security interests of the United States of America. Scott Ritter paying the heavy price often for what he says. And he paid the heavy price, by the way, for being 100% absolutely right about Iraq. Think about that. He paid a heavy price for being absolutely right about Iraq. He was ridiculed after by uh, right-wing radio and Fox News. He was essentially discarded as well by the establishment media. Too controversial, they determined, even to have him on to this day. He was not alone. Chris Hedges is also one of the finest journalists of our time, maybe the best or most complete at investigating issues that affect us. For suggesting the Iraq war was a mistake, for criticizing it, the New York Times fired him. And today, and also CNN and NBC and Fox and all the others won't even let him near their studios. Well, it, it is... And one of many examples of how the Trump administration has been captured by ideologues like Mike Pompeo and, and uh, John Bolton, Elliot Abrams, who have this binary vision of the world, us and them, uh, who don't really believe in diplomacy, don't believe in treaties. Bolton has sabotaged every treaty he's gotten in touch with, who swallow all sorts of conspiracy theories. Remember, Bolton was the one who was selling this idea that Cuba was building biological and chemical weapons and we had to invade, which Colin Powell shut down. Uh, I was intimately involved with Elliot Abrams when I covered the wars in uh, Central America. And what they're really doing is imploding the alliances, uh, whether it is through these treaties, attacking the EU. Pompeo delivered a fierce attack against the EU, deconstructing NATO, uh, attacking the UN, all of the inst international institutions that, in fact, have helped project and protect American power and give a kind of justification for American imperialism. So again, this is a, a classic example of the end of empire when kind of the thugs and the idiots and the fools and the halfwits and the Christian fascists and the kleptocrats take over and implode the very system uh, that uh, has given the country both its economic and its military uh, projection uh, and, and, and ability to uh, essentially dominate not only the world's economy, but often, you know, strategically, as we see within the Middle East. So um, that's what we're watching. We're watching the implosion of the American empire and the rise of uh, essentially people who are utterly incapable of administering anything, Donald Trump being the classic uh, kind of poster child for this. Um, so yeah, it, it makes no sense. I mean, look, we're talking about now, they're fl clearly flirting with building a military force, a hybrid of Brazilian troops, Colombian troops, American troops, to in essence foment a civil war in Venezuela. This is nuts. I mean, this makes about as much sense as Hillary Clinton's uh, invasion of Libya with, and you'll watch exactly the same kinds of uh, consequences. Chris Hedges, thank you so much for uh, taking some time to uh, take us through some of these very important times that we're going through. And uh, as you have often said, that is why squeak we must. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Thanks, Rick. <laughs> I'm Rick Sanchez. You found us on YouTube, and that's awesome. But you know what? I'm also live every night at 7 and 8 p.m. Eastern on DirecTV and Dish and Cable and Satellite, the RT app, oh, and Pluto TV. I'll see you there.